Potter's Journal. I am out of place. Potter's Journal. I am out of. I am out of clay. Here we are at Standard to pick it up. <laughs> Okay, while well, they're filling my order, here's the samples. And I like the hazelnut. What number is the hazelnut? Um, or, yeah. 211. 211. Okay, there it is, right there. And I've used the 2662. It does magic things with the glazes. Yes! <laughs> All right, got clay. Um, I don't have to make keep making things smaller and smaller like I did in the last video and put little buttons on them, getting even smaller still. We can make some pots again. Line up some production stuff, and I started a series of jugs, 101 of them, that are all supposed to be different. And it's been a while since I did anything with that series. We are going to get back to that. And this time, I have been looking at, okay, French earthenware pots and jugs. Um, all different sizes and styles. And I've done the research on the shapes and the forms. But today we have got to get to work. So I decided to make some small ones at a pound and three quarters, and some bigger ones, four pounds, and then some bigger still at five pounds. So let's get back to making 101 jugs. First started making similar to this when I used to make pots back in the 80s and the 90s. Uh, a spouted jug, the small lure that <clears throat> I saw in a French movie. Um, okay, starring Yves Montan and um, let's see, what was the other guy's name? Oh, Gerard Depardieu. Okay, um, not the, actually he wasn't in the second movie. The first movie, um, Jean de Florette and Manon de Source. Okay, that in the opening clips of the second one. Um, Montan's character was drinking from a small spouted jug and um, it was you know, raised way above his head and dropping 18 and 24 inches down into his mouth. So I, I started making them and um, that's uh, when I decided to do this series that was um, kind of my inspiration to get this started. And now the reality of getting back to this. Okay, I am a production potter. I'm used to doing the same thing over and over and over again. The, um, you know, pieces that I make now for production work that seem to come fairly easy, you know, are pieces that, I, yeah, I've gone over and over again and have evolved over the years. Um, I'm finding this quite difficult, having to learn a new form. Um, the movements, how much clay needs to be, um, you know, in the walls in each place, since we're going to bring this out and in and up. So learning a new form, I can't necessarily say just yet what I'm doing, but if you're learning to throw, <laughs> Even if it's just a bowl, um, or a vase, or a cylinder, or a mug, it's a matter of, um, you know, doing it over and over again until you learn the movements, how and where the clay needs to be. That, um, okay, that seemingly <laughs> simple idea behind. Simon Leach's teaching. Repeat, repeat, repeat. <laughs> um, okay, there is some truth and validity to the seemingly simple idea.
and it's taken me about eight of these to get at least a little bit of uh, some of the movements worked out. I, um, okay, find more fun, more excitement, more enjoyment, okay, more, I find it more interesting, the, uh, assembling and putting together that we'll get to in the next video. So do stop back for that. And if you're subscribed and hit the bell, you'll get a notification and know when that is. And I think the next size I do, the 5 pounds and 4 pounds, might be <laughs> a little easier because I'll be able to get my hand in there if I decide I need this um, a little wider right there. And I've also put these on a bat because I find sometimes when they stiffen up a, a bit, I can come back and stretch it out a bit more yet and come back and even undercut it want more um, do in a sense uh, trimming the bottom while it's still on the bat and not having to yeah do it the other way it's 9 10 11 it's taken me to maybe finally get Okay, a bit of a rhythm going on this. Um, you know, starting to bring the bottom out. Being careful that this part here doesn't get too thin on me. In fact, not compressing here at all. And then, okay, bringing this, starting to bring this in and thin it out a bit. Trying to keep the top even. I'm finding the bigger ones easier because I'm able to get my hand inside them. And as I yeah, brought that in, it gets thicker, so then I have to bring it up. Probably just like anything else I did would have um, <laughs> benefited from doing a whole board of big ones, the little ones, and um, instead of just eight. Before moving on to the bigger ones. started many years ago by uh, yeah the food or I should say drink in a movie okay there is quite a bit of clay still down here but I okay I am getting it with the rib I um, also can trim some of it off. Um, even while it's on the bat, once again, that's why I'm throwing them on a bat. Um, plus, or well, another benefit of throwing it on the bat. If they could be trimmed upright. Okay, and that is it. A low, wide base at the bottom. Um, this part here, I can bring out after it stiffens up. I think a lot of people would use a torch to do that. I will just let this sit overnight and do that tomorrow.
And there's been a lot of variation in the ones I've looked at, which is maybe why um, I had some trouble narrowing in on how to do the form. That I really didn't work it out in my head or in the sketches exactly how I wanted it to be. I need to get the water out of the bottom. And I lost the sponge. Okay, there we go. Okay, give that a bit more of a stretch now. But I will finish it tomorrow once it's stiffened up a bit. This needs to be a little bit wider here for the spout to come up and off of there. Some of these are hand built. This should be about the bottom of the spout. And this will be a little lifting pad. So I will cut that twice. Once at the bottom of the spout. And once at the little convenient lifting pad. That also keeps the bottom from drying out too fast set up on the board. Um, some of these call for spouts that are hand built and some call for a thrown spout um, off the hump seems to be the best way to do it. I um, just did that too in the last video with the um, shots with the little medallions made out of buttons. Uh, maybe I'll put a link up at the end of that. Uh, making these at a variety of sizes so I can then choose the size that seems right but I'm also making with a tall neck so that I can always use them shorter and they're also likely to be cut on an angle too so another reason for them to be tall um, and wide And, um, yeah, some of this is going for a form and a shape that I've seen, and some of it is my own interpretation, too, so. together <laughs> in the next video. Yeah, not bad for a new form. Um, I'll uh, get it. I could blame it on the clay, but I like this clay. I think they used to, years ago, have some kind of magic clay that I could make big things out of with no problem at all. I don't have the recipe anymore. Or maybe it was that I was a full-time potter at the time, and, um, and that was it. So, well, blame it on the materials or the tools. Um, I still, okay, um, this is my setup. I've got to unload the truck yet, but this is my setup. I've got the wheel here. I've got the sketches up there to go by. Now, is it a mirror or a TV you're supposed to have here? Um, okay, let's get that truck unloaded. Oh, I was so anxious to make some pots. I only took one box of clay in. Now, we have got to unload the truck. I got... 600 pounds of clay, um, 500 of it, number 211 from Standard. They're hazelnut. It's a cone 4 to 6. Um, I got it because it's a little bit darker, richer body. Um, and if you've been watching, you know I'm going for a um, reduction look in an oxidation kiln. Um, I got one sample bag um, of 153 stoneware. Um, it's cone 6 to 10, so it will go up higher than one I'm using. And um, I think I got it in the past. I think this is it. But um, I got it because um, I'm going to take Simon Leach's workshop. He's only three hours from me. And I've always wanted to use a treadle wheel. Fortunately, um, the workshop was filled, and the only thing that was left was a treadle wheel. So that is going to put me out of my element. And I thought... Um, 
before I give it a spin, I would get a bag of the clay and give it a spin because I found that, you know, every clay um, really performs differently. I uh, um, once went to demonstrate and, um, yeah, how come I can't throw a pot? And it was a different clay body. Um, I found that the hazelnut um, really, um, yeah, yeah, is nice for throwing. I can do things with it that I can't always do with um, other clay bodies. Um, I've um, also, I still have some sample of this. They're 266. It is a really dark clay body. Also a mid-range for four, cone four to six. Um, and it's, um, if you use the glazes right, you know, not only the reduction look, but um, even maybe a wood kiln a little bit look from it. So, um, I, I, something I maybe should try more of, but I haven't. Um, I got my, um, so stop back for, um, yeah, the um, Simon Leach workshop. Stop back um, to see me mix up the glazes. Stop back or stop over now if you're close by. And um, help me unload this truck. Okay.